everybody, Steve here from After Further Review, and today I'm here to show you History Maker Baseball. This game was designed by Keith Avalone from Play.com. It was released back in 2013. It's for one or two players, and a game's going to take you anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes to play out. Now, tabletop baseball simulations have been around for over 50 years, and if you're familiar with them, you'll know that a lot of them, they focus on numbers. Whether it's a grid of numbers, a column of numbers, baseball games traditionally have been all about numbers. So what's gonna really stick out when you first look at this game is that the player cards do not have any numbers on them. They have qualities listed, and it's these qualities that you'll derive the results of each at bat from. So whether you're dealing with an ace pitcher, a slugging batter, or maybe a stoic outfielder, each player's quality may or may not come up during an at-bat. So how does this all come together in gameplay? Well, let's take a look at what comes inside the box. I'll show you a couple sample at-bats, and then I'll tell you what I think after further review. So here's a look at everything that comes inside the box and I've got the game all set up and ready to go. We're going to be recreating game 7 of the 1975 World Series and those are the two sample teams that come in the set. So you get the Cincinnati and Boston teams and you also get six umpire cards from all the umpires that were actually in that World Series along with a couple of ballpark cards representing Fenway Park and Riverfront Stadium. You also get a deck of manager cards and these are something that just are an optional item you can add to the game. They add a little bit of extra depth to the choices that you make as a manager and you can use them for solo play or for head-to-head. -head. However, it only comes with one set of these, so if you're going to play head-to-head, -head, there is a free download on the Play.com site that you can get your second set of cards. It also comes with a couple of score sheets. It comes with a couple of sheets that one details how you can actually play the game using baseball trading cards, which is kind of a, a neat aspect of the game. And then the other one has the listing of all of the Major League ballparks that have been in use pretty much since the beginning of professional baseball. So if you want to play at a different stadium, this will tell you what the qualities of those stadium cards are. All right, then you get two game boards. One you'll have the pitchers and batters on, and then one you'll have everybody that's in the dugout as well as the umpire cards. And then you get a rule book. It's about 28 pages long, um, pretty well laid out. Shows you everything you need to know to get going. Describes all of the player qualities in a little bit more detail. And then there are two sheets. One of them is double-sided. And these are the pre-game charts. And this is where you'll determine what kind of mood your team is in. And then if anything special happens to your team. So lots of neat little things that are added on the pre-game chart. And then there's also even a weather chart. So if you wanted to, you can see which region you're playing the game in, what month of the year it's in, and then roll a couple dice to see if maybe there's a chance of rain, whether it's cold that day. And this does a really good job of explaining everything that could happen. And then the heart of the game is the game action booklet. So it's a nice spiral bound booklet that has all the results from each at bat right in here. Although most of the time, you're just gonna to refer to these two pages. And in fact, let's take you through one sample at bat right now. So there are the four dice in the game. There's three six-sided dice, red, blue, and black, and then a decider die. This has three dots and three blank sides, and that's gonna come into play when you have a quality that is listed as a semi-quality, noted with the dot beside it. And simply, when you roll the die, if it comes up a dot, that means the player has that quality for this at bat, and if it comes up blank, then he doesn't. So, we're in the bottom of the first inning. The reds went down one, two, three in the top of the first, 
And so we have Don Gullet pitching to Bernie Carbo. So we'll roll the three dice. And how you're going to read them, you're going to put them in ascending order, reading them from smallest to largest. And so in this case, we got a 2-4-4. Four, four. So we'll go to the game booklet, and we see a 2-4-4 four, four asks us first in the pitcher column if the pitcher is an ace. So right away we see Don Gullet, he has the ace, but it's with the dot, or the semi-quality. And we look at the decider die, and it came up blank. So he is not an ace for this at bat. So we'll move on to the next column. And it asks if the batter has the champion quality. Well, Bernie does not. So we move on to the final column, which is the fielder column. And that tells us that it's a ground out to the shortstop. And then there's a little symbol beside it that's the whiffer symbol. So we go over to the next page, and that tells us that if the batter has the whiffer, then he actually strikes out. So instead of grounding out to short, he would strike out. But again, we see that Bernie has the semi-quality listed, and in this case, the decider die was blank, although we can re-roll it again for the batter since it's already been used, and it comes up blank. So he is not a whiffer for this at bat, so instead of striking out, he just grounds out to short. So we mark that on the score sheet, and we move on to the next batter. We'll look at the experience column for this at bat. And that's going to come into play when you go to the experience mini chart. So there's two ways that you'll use the experience chart. One is you can actually play one of your manager cards. And instead of rolling the on the normal charts, you'd go right to the experience chart. And then the other way is there'll be some results that are highlighted in red. So, for instance, in that last at-bat, if we had rolled a 2-4-5, we would have gotten a pop-out to second base, but you'll see that it's highlighted in red, and that lets you know that the next at-bat will be resolved on the player experience chart. So when you go to a mini chart, you're only going to roll two of the d6 and the decider die, and we see that both Gullet and Doyle are semi-icons. And so we'll roll the two dice along with the decider die, and we've got a 3-5 and a blank. So we look, and at 3-5 it says, is it an icon batter? So unfortunately, he is not considered an icon because that came up blank. So he would have got a single to the outfield, but instead he just flies out to right field. So we'll mark down the second out. And then that brings us to our third batter of the inning, Carl Yastrzemski. So two down, nobody on. And this time we're going to play a manager influence card and we're gonna to go to the chemistry chart so in my pregame roles Cincinnati came up as semi dissonant and Boston came up as harmonious so they have harmony for this game and so you'll see on the team chemistry mini chart again we're just gonna roll two dice along with the decider die and we get a 2-5 and the decider dot is up and so at 2-5 it says, does the pitching team have dissonance? And indeed they do. So a lack of hustle means that a modestly hit ball drops in for a single. And that's really all there is to learning how to play History Maker Baseball. The game booklet does a good job of describing the breakdown of each of the different qualities. But basically, if a quality sounds like it's good, then generally it is. So the better batters will be champions, heroes, sluggers, and home run kings. Whereas the weaker hitters, they'll be utility or sad sack or eager batters. And maybe they'll have the whiffer quality. Then the same thing for the pitchers. If they're an ace or a star, then you'll know that they're your better pitchers, or maybe if they're a workman or a struggler, then perhaps they're ones you don't want in in high leverage situations. Okay, so there's a look at History Maker Baseball, and as you can see, it's a game that's very easy to pick up and learn, and yet has a lot of depth going on behind the game engine. Now, a couple of small quibbles up front. First off, the score sheet that comes with the game is a little sparse for my taste and there are some better user-made score sheets that you can download out there on the web 
And also there is a couple of results in the playbook that can sometimes leave you wondering exactly how you should resolve the at bat. However, those can generally be resolved just using a little bit of logic or if worst comes to worst, you can always just roll the decider die and let that decide what happens. But those two minor quibbles aside, this is an excellent game and it's something that I really recommend to anybody who is interested in baseball games. But also if you're just a gamer in general and perhaps you've been interested in looking at a sports game but you were sort of put off by what has been available, this is a really good product to pick up and sort of get your feet wet in this whole sports simulation industry. And the reason for that is that it's very intuitive to just learn right out of the box, a very short setup time, very small footprint. And on top of it all, it's just a really fun game to play out. My ultimate test for a game of how much I like it is when I get done playing, if I immediately want to set it up and play it again, that's my idea of a great game. And this definitely passes that test with Flying Colors. It's a game that continues to be on my tabletop even after three years and something I'm going to continue to have for many more years to come. All right, everybody, that is all for now. Thank you for watching. And until next time, get out there, have fun, play games, and I'll see you after further review. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.